This is the show dedicated to raising up the next generation of men of faith and character. My name is Mark Stanifer. Welcome to The Next Men Up. Hey guys, welcome back once again to the Next Man Up podcast. So good to have you with us and to be part of this community that's changing the world by raising up healthy and godly men. My name is Mark, you know that, and I'm flying solo once again today. Okay, so before I get into the topic today, which is part rant, I will just warn you up front, I am excited to share with you this announcement. Guys, we are just weeks away from releasing our new video course called Forging Men, Rediscovering the Ancient Path to Manhood, and I want you guys to be a part of it. As I said, it's a new video course that will help you rediscover this ancient way that men are made. Becoming a man does not happen naturally or on accident. It happens through a process, a process of initiation. And if you've been listening to us for a while, you know that we continue to beat that drum. And we're excited to to offer this course as a way for, for you to understand why initiation is so critical for a boy, to, to help you get a vision for the role that you play as his dad or as his father figure, guiding him through a process, and to be able to equip you with the tools to build a customized initiation plan. All that is part of this Forging Men course. It includes video teaching, a robust workbook where you will do your design work, guidance for how you can engage your son in communication and activities around these topics, and you get to do it as part of a community of other dads who are hungry to do the same thing with their sons and be a part of that same journey. Forging Men The next cohort begins on April 1st. If you are interested, if you want to be a part of this, head out to our website, thenextmanup.com slash forgingmen, and you can find all the information that you need there and can get yourself signed up. We would love to have you as part of this cohort that's beginning on April 1st. Don't miss it. Take advantage of this opportunity to learn how to create the initiation process that your boy wants in order to be guided into manhood. We're happy to support you this way and offer this course to equip and encourage and challenge you. So once again, thenextmanup.com slash forging men, you can get all the information there and get yourself signed up today. Okay, so now to today's topic. So as I often do, I scan Netflix for movies or TV shows that catch my interest, catch my attention. I park them in my queue, as I'm sure you do, and then I come back to them at some point when I have some time to allocate. Well, I found a show called The Letter for the King, and the the graphics, the trailer, it, in, it intrigued me. And so it, it dropped into my queue and was excited to, to get to it. Now, you should know that we're pretty careful when it comes to TV and movies and the content that we watch. And initially, as we got into this six-episode season one, I was pretty encouraged by the content and the direction that it was going. And in the process, early on, I discovered that the series was based on a book. And so, as I often do, I I will read the book as well. And generally speaking, the books are are usually better. And I know that. Um, So, I started reading the book and we started going through an episode at a time or two. And Because of what I was reading in the book and because of the direction that the show took, I just became more and more dissatisfied with the the show until finally I just turned it off and walked away the other night because uh, I just couldn't take it anymore. Now, the original story was written by someone named, uh, by a lady named Tonka Drocht. I'm sure I butchered the spelling. She's from the Netherlands. It was written in 1962. It won a Children's Book of the Year award. And interestingly enough, enough, the story 
It is about knights and medieval times and good versus evil. And she was actually knighted herself in 2001. And so, some back some backstory, some context for for the story. As I said, the the storyline is about knights and castles and lords and rings and and boys becoming knights, going from that squire to the knight stage. And so you can you can imagine that's part of what captured my attention. In, in fact, the book reads a lot like the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit type of story. There's a a boy, a squire, really, who's who's. Um, in the process of becoming a knight, and he's tasked with delivering a letter to the king in an unusual and a surprising way. And again, as I mentioned, I I know that for readers, books are generally better or more enjoyable than than the shows. Um, but having finished this book, I highly recommend this story. I give the book itself two thumbs up. It would be a great read for you and your sons. Even even your daughters, I think, would enjoy the story. But I got to tell you, two thumbs down on the TV show. Now, here comes the rant. Let me tell you why. First of all, all of the valiant men from the story were eliminated. In the TV show, there were no men of honor or valor or virtue, things that you would associate with being a knight or the best, the best of that period of time. Instead, what we were served up were despots and tyrants and mercenaries and self-serving castle lords or weak and... Um, and fearful men that were that were retreating back from standing up for for good and and defending against evil. The book had example after example after example of these honorable and character filled and courageous men, and they were all eliminated in the story. That's reason number one. The second reason, two thumbs down on the TV show, is these squires, this class of squires graduating into knights were extremely disappointing. In fact, they were a joke. They were uninspiring. They were, they were lost. They were confused. They were not unified in purpose. In fact, one of them becomes a mercenary and jumps ship to the other side. One of them is a privileged brat whose money, whose family money and status bought him into this role, essentially. And really, seemingly, none of them were worthy of the, the title and the responsibility and the honor of being a knight. Now, I might be a little too fairy ish here. But I'm telling you, based on this cast of graduating squires into knighthood, I would not feel safe or inspired if they were the ones that were guarding me and my community back in the day. They were just extremely disappointing. And again, it's a significant deviation from the inspiring story that was told in the book. And, and here's my third point. Again, I'm ranting here very clearly, but here's, here's the third reason, two thumbs down on this TV show. It was not at all period appropriate. Now, I will admit, I, I may be walking a fine line here, and believe me, I don't have a Pollyanna view of medieval times. There were problems back then. Night didn't always equal valor and and good and courageous. And when, when, when you look at even some of those concepts of chivalry, I think we, we can interpret them in a, and live them out in perhaps a better way in today's day and age. So I don't think chivalry and knights are equal to ideal. And the reality is life today is better for, for women for those who are poor, for anyone who is not in a privileged class status, 
that we think of back in those medieval times, life today is just better. Democracy, education, opportunity, freedoms and rights that we have today that didn't exist back in those periods where they were ruled by kings and lords and dictators and on and on and on ago. So, I don't have a Pollyanna view of medieval times. But here's where I struggle with this TV show being believable. One of the knights to be, one of the squires, was actually a girl. Now, the women were involved in battle they, they, in, those period, in, the, in that time period. They were defending their homes. They were serving other, um, other soldiers and, and warriors. They even fought themselves. That took place, but as a rule, they were not trained as knights. And yet, in the TV show, one of these squires is portrayed by a girl. In addition to that, because all of the valiant men were written out of the TV show, the heroes in the story that were emerging were female, because men had been made to look evil or irrelevant or weak or foolish, and so all the emerging heroes were female. Now, again, I'm not opposed to female heroine stories. They're important. They're relevant. We have plenty of them today. But for this time period, it just wasn't believable. And then really the final straw for me was a boy-to-boy kiss scene. And look, no doubt it happened back then. I'm not disputing that. But in the book, it didn't happen. And in this story, it was just completely unnecessary. And ultimately, for those reasons, the TV show is just not believable. Two thumbs down for me. Okay, now my rant is over. If you're still with me, thank you for listening in on this. I, as I said, I'm done with the show. I didn't even finish the the final episode because I got up and walked away. But I loved the book. the The book is so much better because it captures the things about manhood and masculinity that that we celebrate here, about courage and honor and valor and virtue and strength and defending good versus evil, defending those that need to be defended. There's so much to celebrate in the book, but the TV show is just a complete mess, and I would avoid it altogether. Take it from me. So read the book with your kids. Talk about cultural differences. Talk about how, how, how culture, how good versus evil gets presented in the media. We've done a number of podcast episodes on media consumption in general. Have these conversations. Read and engage. Talk about shows after you watch them with your kids. But skip this show because it's not worth it. Find stories that portray a bigger and better version of what it means to be a man. Okay, guys, we'll cut the rant there. You don't need to hear me go on and on. If you've watched that show, I'm curious if you came to the same conclusion. If you haven't read the book, I would encourage you to do so. And if you have any other feedback, as always, we love to hear from you. Feedback at thenextmanup.com is where you can email us or find us on Facebook at NMU Journey. All right, guys, that's it. Until next time. Adios. Hey, listeners, thanks for journeying with us on this Next Man Up podcast. You know, we would love to hear from you. Maybe you have a question or an idea, perhaps a topic for us to consider. If that's you and you want to reach out to us, you can get us at feedback at thenextmanup.com. That's feedback at thenextmanup.com. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.